All right, time for a little bit of lathe talk. So what I have here is a bounce staff. This bounce staff is made for a Hamilton Lancaster grade pocket wash. I'm just going to slip this under really quickly so you can have a look at that. So that's a Hamilton Lancaster grade pocket watch. And the balance and the balance staff fit in right there, as you can see. I'm up pretty close today. And the old balance staff, um, pivot broke off the end of it, so I should be talking with my golf voice right now. So at the very end of this pivot job, I found that the pivot was a bit too long. So, and when I put it on the lathe and measure it, what I do is I get nice and close, try not to hit the camera here. Uh, let me see, can I do this without hitting the camera? Yeah, I think so. And I put the old balance staff right beside it. And I'll touch the tip of the old balance staff pivot where the uh, base is, where the, b the balance itself will, will be riveted on, or it's friction fit, I think, in this case. But then I'll measure that distance just like this like that and see if I've got the right distance there and this is after making sure I've got the pivot down to the right size so that that is absolutely perfect there yeah that's absolutely perfect so one thing though my uh, the rim for the um, balance that'll be riveted on the balance is a little bit thicker than the existing one but not that much so it shouldn't make that much a difference it might raise the hairspring up just a tad so that could cause a problem so uh, so what I did is I I used a stone like this and holding the stone this is super close up man holding the stone very carefully like so I remove material, let me get the right side of this thing here, from the pivot by, by rubbing back and forth like that. Now that work I did, okay, after I had used my very, very precise graver. Let me flip this up so you can see, have a look at that. So there's the flip over tool rest. And the graver here is a flat let me see can you see that there it is there so that's a flat graver and it's two millimeters wide right and that just takes material off but just take a little tiny bit off with no issue at all and then I go to a rounded tip two millimeter graver this one here get close again here and that just helps me dome that pivot so I round it from the tip of the pivot to around here with this rounded tip graver coming in at a bit of an angle like I said I'm super close right now so I've done another video on how to do that so so that's that's a passe I think and then after I did that, I've got a um, Burrell, I think it's Burrell, is it Burrell? Yeah, Burrell measuring device here. So this has got laid in jewels, and I slip that device, I just put that over the pivot until I get to the right size, and I got it down to 12, right? And I look at the older pivot and see where that goes in. Now if that doesn't work um, then you've got to get out a series of I'll show you these here a series of pivot gauges or ga depth gauges I guess they're called right so and let me take out a number 12 see if I've got I had one I broke off by accident so well, this one's good so this is a depth gauge so that's what a depth gauge looks like 
and that is a 12 and what I then do is take the balance cock and because I've got a stereo microscope I can take this balance cock and take the end of that and make sure that it's a 12 that fits in there and not a 10 or a 9 right so I just drop that in the middle and ruin everything again like I always say when you're videotaping this stuff kinda sucks anyway so so I'll take that and I'll put that into the pivot you can see how it's wider let's see if I can get this focus you can see the wider there's three steps the, the one you hold the next step down and the very tip of it and the very tip of it is a is a 12 point but it's 0.12 millimeter on the end of that so I'll just make sure jeez uh, any of you guys ever watch Trailer Park Boys which is a Canadian show it's oh jeez Ricky oh jeez <laughs> trying to keep it clean anyway I'll, um, I'll just slip that in there and make sure that's the right size and I'm not uh, and I don't have the wrong size pivot so let me just do that really quickly here I'm going to pause for a second so 0.12 is actually a little too fat so I have to remove just a little tiny bit of material more material off the end of the pivot so I'll do that try not to bore you too much it off with my finger a bit and that should fit so what I'm going to do is before I, uh, I got to step back and do this myself but I, the, what I really wanted to say was I've got this uh, Bergeron Bergeron what is it it's called a V-A-L-L-O O-R-B-E Valorbe Valorbe Swiss and it's a burnisher so on one side you get a smooth metal with kind of lines that go this way so they go the lines actually go parallel to where the pivot is pointing but when you move it back and forth it scrapes the pivot and the other side when I take the protective cap off is a file a pivot file and at the end of the pivot file it's sl slightly rounded and there's the more of the, uh, the filing uh, grade or whatever you want to call it on the end is kind of taken off so it's smoother so you can complete a, do a complete pivot with this pivot file and what I have to do now um, I get it down to 0.12 but then I can remove 0.01 off this by just using the, um, the rounded edge here and carefully um, moving it on the pivot like this just to take off the excess burrs and stuff You don't want to spin the, the uh, lathe too fast because it will temper. Sorry about the moving of the camera there, folks, because I do have to get in pretty close here and it's causing all kinds of problems. I think I'm touching it, so. But it's. Um, there you go. And it'll take the burrs off and then turn it at just an angle so you can round the pivot. And you just do that a few times, not too much, or you'll take the you'll get rid of that perfect d this length that you wanted of the pivot, right? And that'll be other problems. So, so that's how you do that. Um, and I just thought of a really novel idea, and I'll show you. Maybe I'll show you that after, um, not today, but later on. Uh, and that's when I go to fit the balance on here to see if it actually fits. You take this off and you take the balance and you stake it on and you put it into the movement and then you see if it moves around well that's that'll be a pain because if it doesn't fit then I got another problem I can't put it back in my lathe and then spin it and try to take some more material off or do whatever on the lathe and I've, I've got to actually go back I got to go to the J-Cut tool to finish it off which I sometimes do but what I thought I'd do is take some old uh, cards I have and they're for 
they're made for uh, they're just room cards for hotels and I'll cut a card uh, circular same size like the size of a nickel which is the same size of balance and I'll put that card on which probably has the right thickness and I'll stake the card on um, and that I don't have to worry about that moving any metal because it's just plastic and then I'll put the, the the fake balance and the and the balance staff into the movement and put the balance cock on and then I'll see whether the thing can rotate and whether it's free to rotate and if it's free to rotate I've solved my problem um, and it's the right uh, pivot uh, width 0.11 which is what it is um, and then I've, I'm game to to now stake the balance and everything works so so I'm gonna do a credit card thing see if that works and then uh, go from there so maybe I'll videotape that I'm not sure yeah, maybe I will we just pause for now I just as a final test I uh, took the, um, the actual uh, balance cock here and I fitted it on the end here and made sure that uh, it went all the way down through the jewel and it did so I don't want to do that again because I can't really get behind this camera and do that but I get pretty close actually just looking at my screen here but anyway did that and it fit absolutely perfect so it was 0.11 not 0.12 so that's ready to go and I'm going to see if I can make that fake uh, fake balance to test this all right just before I go this is my uh, setup here what I have is I'll grab my burnishing tool here this is one I showed you close up the Valerobe burnishing tool I think it's called and so I've got my lathe set up here I'm just going to touch this here because i got a piece of Rodico stuck on here with the the old uh, balance staff on there and that's the uh, balance cock there and um, the balance is still in here I haven't taken it out yet um, and so what I do is I just put my lathe right on the desk here and I've got a power cord right going through there right there um, I just set this up differently recently because I'm, I'm going to be getting a mini bench soon that's going to fit right in here. So I'll be able to work close, close, more closely on watches because I'm not down low enough, which is not good for posture. Um, I do use these are the um, the gravers that I showed you earlier, and they're really small, so I use mini, mini, mini gravers, so 0.2 millimeters on the end. And I've got a set of four of those. So I've got the point twos and the point, or sorry, two millimeters and four millimeters. I got a round one on the on the tip, and I've got a, a flat one on the tip, like square or flat. So rounded and flat, or domed and flat. Um, so I've got two two millimeters, and I mark the case two F two flat, and I've got uh, um, rounded ones that are four mil, uh, one rounded one, one flat one, four millimeters. That's so confusing. Anyway. And here's the uh, movement I'm working on right now. That's the uh, that is the Hamilton Lancaster movement. I can't, it's kind of been in the in the uh, in the movement holder here for the past six months, I think. And I've had to get around to actually sizing that bounce step I made a while back. So that's the movement in there that I need that I'm working on right now. And I have dual screens here, and I have another screen. A laptop holder there that's my work laptop and it goes over to an arm and then down here and I bolted this to the wall so this thing is bolted right to the wall and it can swivel over if I want it to I'll just move it up for a sec so you can see so there's the um, there it is bolted to the wall and then and then over here I've got another table here with a staking set and oh more tools that way and what I have what I did with this was kind of cool. So I took a board. Um, this is a very old desk that I've had for a lot of years. So <clears throat> I took a board and I was thinking, how can I use this microscope without having to turn it around and do this and get my body in here and all that kind of stuff. So I thought this could be an ingenious thing. So what I did was I, I took a bolt and I drilled through my desk. And I've got a bolt here, a brass bolt with a washer. And on the other side, I've got another brass bolt. Oh, there I am. How you doing? On the other side, I've got another brass bolt or nut on there with a washer. And then so I can take this whole rigmarole. Let me put the screwdriver set on here. 
I gotta figure out a way of raising it a bit so the screwdriver set sinks in. Maybe I'll drill a hole in the bottom of the screwdriver set. <laughs> anyway, blasphemy, blasphemy. Uh, anyway, now I can just do this. Watch this. Look at that. I can rotate it all the way to this position here before it hits the computer screen. And then I can use my microscope right like this. It's right, there's my microscope, there's my work surface. I can do my work in the microscope. And there's only one bolt holding this, and this microscope weighs a lot. Right? It's, a big, it's a big stereo microscope, very nice one. Um, and as Mr. Trump said, it's beautiful. It's very beautiful. And then this just rotates with it, and then just put it out of, you know, put it back into position here. So that's absolutely perfect. So if you've uh, got a desk, you're not using a watchmaker's desk, and you want to uh, have this thing working adjusted properly, then you can do that. And you swing it right over like that. Use the microscope, swing it back. It's out of the way. So that was pretty cool. It's my electrical engineering degree coming into play. Right? Um, the other thing I have is my, co I call this my COVID-19 stand, so I can put my uh, work telephone, let me show you how that works, I won't open it up, but I put my work telephone in the stand like that, and then do FaceTime and whatever I need to do on that, with that particular uh, microscope device, iPhone, and I've got a power cable that sticks in there, so for work, so i got my work here, and when I'm working the daytime, I can use this screen up top here and the big screen here and I've got a, a DP KVM switch right so that's a digital port KVM switch um, and that's keyboard something and mouse switch um, keyboard video and mouse I think switch and then that just switches this is some beastie back here and that just allows me to use my personal computer over here whenever I want to have my personal computer on both screens like on the weekend or have my work computer piped down into into this screen here, which is absolutely perfect. Oh, sorry. <laughs> now I do have a Canadian sense of humor, so so this is my lathe that I that I use today, and that's a you think it's a Bowley or something? Yeah, that's a Bowley lathe, um, G Bowley lathe, great condition. It's got little oilers on the top here, and I've got a a foot pedal down there, it's a dentist foot pedal and it's very high end, but I think it's using the same, there's a foot pedal called a, a four, four cam, four scam or something, four scam foot pedal, big plastic one, this is all metal, so you get much better control with your toes on it, so I can speed it up like this, like that, with my toes, or I can give it a lot more speed if I want to smooth out something but not try to harden the metal on it. Um, and I run it probably when I'm cutting for, for watchmaking, I'm running it about that fast there. And then I'll adjust it. I'll slow it down and speed it up as I see wh whatever cut I'm getting on here, and I can adjust the, the cut on it, right? And it has a flip over tool rest here. So it's a pretty cool lathe. Let me just point down a little bit more here. Um, and there we go. Let's move it over a bit. There we go. That's the lathe there. It's a Bowley, a G Bowley lathe, and it's a nice mint condition. And I use that for cutting, cutting bound staffs. Now these are rubber belts here, but I've made leather belts for my other lathes. This is a counter shaft, so the counter shaft just provides you more torque. It's going from a sewing machine motor running at whatever RPMs. I think this baby can go up to 4,000 RPMs, driving a, a, a larger wheel. Right, and if you do the math, it's if it drives a much smaller wheel, you're going to get more torque on this. But that small wheel then has to go to a um, a larger wheel here to drive more torque here. So that's how it works. That way, I don't have to have much power on the motor in the back to drive the torque on this end because you don't want chattering while you're cutting um, while you're cutting with your gravers. Um, so you need to have really good torque. Now my other lays, like I said, I got a bunch of these lays. And I usually I have driving with leather belts, which are uh, which are nicer to uh, they're just more quiet. Uh, if you use these belts, you can buy these really cheap cheap and melt them together. Um, and there's a technique for putting a knife in the middle and melting it with the knife and then sliding the knife out as you melt the belt together. But this one's okay, but I found other ones. Uh, so I've had some that crack. I 
you end up having to, to use a Dremel tool to take the edges off so it doesn't make lots of noise. Um, I've bought, I've got I think six counter shafts like this and they're vintage and I recondition them completely so they're in mint condition. I use steel wool and I just go crazy with the steel wool. It's actually synthetic steel wool. Um, the other thing about this lathe is just kind of neat, I gotta be careful because I do want to finish this watch off. Um, is it's got a collet holding tailstock, right? So let me see if I can slip this on. There we go. So it's got a collet holding tailstock here with a micrometer on the end. Um, and then you can basically tighten the whole thing. We'll move back and forth if you loosen that, as you can see, right? And, um, and what I use that for, like that. So I'll take the collet and I'll screw that in like that. And you can adjust the. Uh, just this in or out for depth and then I can use that for drilling uh, drilling pivots if I want to drill a pivot I can put a very fine drill bit in there and drill a pivot I think I made some la some uh, videos on how to do that before so but but having a collet holding tailstock is like gold Jerry it's gold so I highly recommend that uh, the other thing is that this this lathe is on a Burrell uh, Burrell stand it's called Burrell as well right Anyway, it's a Burrell stand, so everything is just screwed into the Burrell stand. I use wing nuts here so I can tighten them and make sure everything is good. I just bought some hardware and some L brackets to put the sewing machine motor on. That was pretty simple, and there's plenty of little holes in this Burrell stand. I think I had to drill of my own hole to custom fit this for another one. This one here is using the existing slot holes that are in there. So. So that's my setup for this. Uh, last but not least, I just took a, uh, a dishwashing mat here, and this just catches all the leftover metal that comes down from the lathe. Before it was really big, and it went all the way back, and I decided to just cut it, cut it from the back here, and make sure that it's not too big, and uh, and it doesn't interfere with the stuff I have back here. So I've got to clean this up a bit in the back. Um, I've got a pocket watch back there that needs to. Some adjusting. I got. I bought these nice, cool pocket watch stands here that are kind of nice. They're um, they're really neat, man. Really neat little pocket watch stands. You put them down there, and it's like you see in the back. And there's pocket watch sitting on them. And uh, I've got a hairspring coming in for a for one of these. I got a uh, ladies' watch, but there's a watch. This is a watch movement in there for a wristwatch, right? So someone converted that many years ago, but it's a lady's waltham and I've got a hairspring coming in because I basically screwed the hairspring up. I think I screwed it up. Anyway, occasionally I screw things up. So the main point here was, that's the lathe part, but the main point here is just, just how cool is this? How cool is this? So uh, hopefully you watched right to the end of the video and you saw this beastie, right? Let me turn that on. And this is just too cool. So I can flip it over, look in there, do my work, all kinds of stuff, and the cool factor is like 20, I think, 20, at least 20. And also, when I bought this stand off Amazon for the for my laptop, it's basically a laptop stand, I didn't have any way of clamping it on the desk. So another thing, what I did here was, you can see that through there, is I just found out where the stud was on the wall, and I just screwed it with heavy duty screws there's four holes in this thing and I have heavy duty screws right into the wall so if there's a a tornado comes by I can chain myself to this stand and I will survive the tornado because that thing is in really really good so so that's right into the stud uh, no problem probably much stronger than even clamping it onto the desk so, so that was what I did there so that was kind of cool um, but really I mean come on you got to show this to your friends because this is pretty cool how do you do that Look, you could you could also like put your food on there, right? So if you want to eat lunch and you're really lazy, you could have your lunch here. You could eat a bit of lunch like that, make a sandwich, do some stuff, and then flip that over out of the way, and there you go, and you're back to work again. Anyway, I talked way too long in the video. So the point I wanted to make was instead of using a balance to finish the pivot off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a little piece of credit card and put that on and see if I can spin the credit card inside the movement to see if it fits. So you see, let's try to do that. 
I mean, one more last one more thing. So when, I, when you take the the bounce step that you made out of the collet, right? You loosen the collet till it's a little bit, this still a little bit tight, um, but you but you can touch the bounce staff with your fingernail. And then take a piece of rotigo and stick it on the end of the, the pivot. It won't break the pivot, and you can just pull the bounce staff out without without ruining anything, right? So that's the best way of doing it. And there's the uh, there's the, the collet that I use was a an eight, so it was an eight. So this is an eight millimeter. Uh, I grabbed onto where the uh, roller table is on this thing. Someone told me that I should use wax chucks to chuck it up properly, but I put this in here, and then I use my fingernail ever so lightly as I spin it when it's when it's not super tight, just a little bit tight, and I can center the call, center the uh, the piece of metal that way. So it works really well. Just use the end of your fingernail, so you get good feel for it, and then spin it that way. So that's my technique. So I'm gonna put the lathe away now. And I'm going to see if I can cut myself a piece of credit card that will fit on there. Alright, this is probably the dumbest thing I've ever done in watchmaking, but I'm going to do it anyway. So, I'm going to grab the, um, the bounce staff here for this Hamilton, and I'm just going to mark a circle down the end here. And just make a mark, because I need it to fit in there. So. One mark on this side, and then one mark here, on this side, and one here, and one here. And what I should do is use a compass and just draw a circle with a compass. So that is what I should do to make a perfect circle. But really, all I want to do is this and make this thing so it fits on the staff and spins. So, and again, I don't know if this will work or not. It depends on how thick this is. So, try that. Run for size. Um, I don't even need to make it. I don't even need to make it round. I don't think, as long as it's, as long as it's not going to interfere with itself, right? So, I could even make it square. Square bound stuff. There you go. Eh? As long as it's not too wide, right? And just make it like this. There we go. And then one more cut. And it doesn't have to be the right weight or anything. So. There, that's the master plan right there. Let's cut the edges off this thing here. Like that, and like that, and like that. Right? Now I'm going to just make a little hole in the center. Um, and center this plastic. I'm going to use the old balance staff to, to have a look at whether this is actually going to work or not. Because um, i got to... We're gonna put a hole in here somehow, so I think I'll use uh, I think I'll use pivots. Just hang on a second. You know, I was saying the other day for the life of me, and I can't remember what something's called because I don't talk to myself about what these are called. But you guys can write me and tell me what these are called, or I can look it up on the internet in five seconds. These are Bergeron. I got a set here, and they're 42.51. And they're used really for widening hands. I use these for widening hands or just removing metal. They're square, but they'll cut and they taper up. So, so I just put that in a holder I have, and the holder is it came with these, right? And these are vintage ones, so just put that in the holder and tighten it up. And I should find figure out a better mathematical way of finding center, but I'm just going to do poke it in like that for a second and see if that looks like it's center. Because again, I'm just trying to make sure that I. Uh, so I just turn this, twist this, and this should start cutting through. Oh, I moved it. Now this is exciting as heck, right? So, so if I do that, and I've got a small one I'm working on right now, so I'm trying not to break it. But I just twist this around. Be very patient. 
I use these actually for making holes and leather leather straps when I make a belt for a lathe and you can make a, a hole that you're going to put the needle sewing needle through right so and once you get it done good enough you can pick it up and then twist it so let's see if I can find the hole again there it is I'm going to put a little bit of pressure on that and see if I can get this going now on okay it's starting to remove material as I twist it it's hard to see but I'm going to hold it like this I'm going to put this right through my finger and then scream like heck so the theory here I'm going to leave this on the video just so you can watch as I fail miserably but the theory here is that I'll be able to put this on the balance staff versus versus staking on the actual balance onto the staff um, and if I have an issue with the uh, with actually the the pivot size on the balance staff I can redo it so there we go so it's all the way through now and I want to make sure that's relatively flat so and I'm not sure how big it needs to be but it needs to fit on the balance so I got a little ways to go quite a ways to go actually if I look at there's where the balance will fit so I'm going to just cut this really fast and I'll, I'll be right back and I don't want you to watch all this with board stiff there you go so I've got the balance sticking in the piece of plastic the credit card um, like so and but it's not at the first step so I just need to get it down I don't think I need to bring it all the way down maybe I do maybe I don't but I gotta take this balance my tweezers here and get this balance off here this is not the one that this is not the balance these are not the drones you're looking for that is not the balance I'm going to use that's the uh, the old one because I want to fit fit it on the old one to make sure it's the right size and then I'm going to fit it on the, I'm really hoping this works because I think it's going to be pretty cool so but I need to get another different size whatever these things are called <laughs> It's funny I use them all the time and I don't remember what they're called all of a sudden so is it age or incompetence I just don't remember so and I don't think I'm zooming in properly oh there you go it's just a zoom Let's see if this camera will zoom properly so I'm gonna make the hole a bit bigger so I just put a bigger one in here and then I'm going to measure that I'd like to get it to the first step here so I picked that up with my uh, Rodico here. It's a lot easier. And then just see if that's going to fit in. So that's in there now. As you can see, sticking in there. This is a shitty focus. I'm going to just refocus this. Well, I'm on the fly, as they say. Refocus it on the fly. Camera control. Get that autofocus off because it sucks. And then grab the little dial here and then refocus this thing so we see that I think put it at around 13 and that's a good 10 or 13 something like that so there we go so that's better focus now so so that would go in like that and then this would go into the uh, the balance so I don't know sure how far how much how th much more material I got to remove but let me just grab this balance staff again. This could be a complete failure. Now if I made if I made this hole like the right the circular, completely circular, then I'm gonna be able to um, here, I'm gonna bring it right to the end here. There, that should be good enough. I'm gonna have to file file it flat too so it sits there nicely. And again, I'm also going to have to get up nice and close to this thing so I know it, so I know it's fitting. So I'm going to just go configure this, and I'll be right back. Right back, I tell you. All right, there we go. Fit in perfectly. There it is. So I'm going to see if I can just throw this in the balance and spin her. See what happens. 
Now this is the old balance staff, so that's the technique. All right, so you're going to think this is nuts. So let me see. I got the balance in right now. I'm going to bring this in and refocus it nicely. All right, not recommended to be done at home. <laughs> I'm going to puff some air on this and see if it spins. So that's a uh, that's a piece of credit card. That's a piece of credit card sticking that's stuck on a balance staff. And that's the old balance staff, so not the new one. But it fits, I just cut it as a square, and it fits in there nicely, right? And it does spin. So I'm making the bold assumption that if I, there we go, if I get the new balance staff in there and I use that same piece of credit card, I should be able to see if that fits properly. Because it doesn't look like it's touching anything when it spins around, so... Anyway, that's just thinking way, way outside the box. Alright, so there's the real balance staff stuck in that little piece of credit card. I, I, I know there's going to be watchmakers out there going to go, what the hell is he doing? But I just had to try this to see where, whether, it, whether it would work or not. So, so I'm going to put this staff in here in place. I'm just going to put place that nice and carefully into into the watch without breaking the pivot. I think it's too high. Or maybe I'm not going to do that, right? What's going on here? There we go. And there it's right where it needs to be. Right there. And then put the balance on. I don't know if this is going to work or not. It's going to be very gentle because I don't want the balance staff to be, the pivot to be broken or altered or anything, right? Because it's a, it's a good one. I'm just going to work this really carefully here so it doesn't screw things up. I'm going to cut out and play with it and come back. All right, I'm going to make sure the lighting is absolutely perfect, but I've got the balance staff. I've got a piece of plastic credit card in there instead of the balance itself. And I'm going to apply a little bit of air to that credit card. And look at her spin, baby. Look at her spin. So that, to me, that's a success. So all I did was use these, I think they're called burnishers anyway. I burnished, made the hole, just kept making it increasingly bigger size. Then I hand fitted the balance on top of this and and it works perfect. And it looks as though the uh, balance staff is staying in place. The balance is completely flat. I don't I didn't put the screw in yet, but it's completely flat all around, so I'm assuming that uh, I did a good job and I cut the pivots perfectly for this thing. Look at her go, man. Look at that thing spin spinning 300 miles an hour plus it's a good way of wearing in the balance so now I know I can rivet this balance back on and I've got myself a successful pocket watch so let's just uh, let's just call that a success I got my staking set I got the balance sitting in here I got the wheel right here so I just have to stake that back on um, and you've, I've got other videos on how to actually align that or do it properly. So I'm going to make sure it's up like that because that's the hairspring side. And then I pick the stake with a hole that's just the right size. Hopefully i got no issues here. And I've got to zoom in and make sure that it's fitting on nicely. And there, is no, and there are no problems. There we go there, I get my mallet out and just tap that just a bit. Now you don't want to tap it too hard, you're better off tapping it more frequently because you can bend the arms and the balance if you tap it too hard. I'm trying not to get in the way of the camera here, but 
just going to tap this just a bit and see what happens. Yeah, it's going on. It's good. It's good news. I think I have to pick a steak that's just a bit bigger too. And once I pound that down, I'm going to have a look and see if... Uh, And that, my friends, looks like it's on nicely. So, there we go there. I suppose you want me to zoom in and show you what that looks like. Eh? But before I do that, I actually have to put on the roller table. So, and it's got the jewel. And tap that on. Um, but I need to have a different, uh, a different uh, stump on the end here to flip that around and put it on that stump. So turn that around there I stuffed that on a big black pad so it could focus but there's the um, there it is and it's staked onto the bounce so it's ready to put the roller table on there now so this is an inverto staking set which means I can take the staking set I can flip the um, flip it around make sure it's lined up here perfectly like so and I tighten that and what I do is I find a stake that fits perfectly over over the end here where I just put the balance on so it's going to be a little bit bigger than than this because I've got a stake on the uh, the roller table now so I might be able to use it but I'd rather use something that's just a bit smaller that fits over the uh, the head there so but I know I can put it all the way through from here right to the end and then use the end here. So you just pause and get the right stuff here. There, I just fitted this on the um, hairspring side so it looks like it's the right size. You can put that right through the bottom like that. And then I can lay the balance, the balance with the new staff in here. And I'm trying to put the roller table on. So this is kind of this is like a stump then, right? That's how this works. Like so. And then I've got the roller table, and I've got to have a stump that's bigger than the roller table, but not too big. So this is probably too big, because it's the same one I used to put the balance on, which had to be a little bit bigger than the balance. Okay, I've found a stake that goes over the roller table side of the balance staff. And... When I put the roller table on, I want the roller table to be at 45 degrees to the balance arms. All right, so I just want to put that on nice and lightly. I'm going to grab the, the jewel itself and try to turn that, just put that on well on camera. Which I hate doing, by the way. There we go. So the roller table is sitting on there now. I just have to nudge it so the jewel is at 45 degrees to the balance arms. Because that's exactly where you want it to be. Just about like that. And I'm going to make sure I get the right side and all the rest of that stuff from screwed Jerry and I put my stake in over the top like this and nice and easy it should all be lined up nicely there we go and I just have to tap that down so what I, I usually do is I take a look at it at an angle so I can see how much I just have to see how much distance I have to tap that and it looks like I got a the width of a credit card <laughs> go figure so, and then tap that down. So that looks pretty good there. And when you tap it, and also it's, when the stake is in there, it's clearing the jewel, so I'm not cracking the jewel. There are stakes that actually have a crack in them for the jewel, so, but this one looks like it's got good coverage there, so. Let me look, yeah, so that's perfect. Let me see if how far down it's gone it needs to go just go a little bit further I think 
I don't want to crack the roller table either, but it's on, going to be on there pretty tight. So. And I'll have another look here. Oh man, that's pretty much done. Yeah, I'm just hoping I don't have any problems with the with the distance there, because then you can have problems with fitting it on and actually catching the things. So I'm going to tap it a little bit more. There, that should be good. Oh yeah, it's almost flat. That's good enough for government work, as they say. And I'm going to put that into movement and see if it actually spins nicely for me. And if it does, I just need to install the hairspring and I'm in business. I think I'll end the video after it springs nicely because I don't want this thing to be too long. So, And you're going to have to trust me that it's actually working. And the arms aren't bent on there, so it looks like I'm good there too. All right, just pause for a second. So the balance fits nicely, but I looked under my uh, stereo microscope and I've got one problem. And the problem is the, um, the balance wheel needs to go down just a bit. So I need to stake it down just a tad more if I can, right? Which is tricky, but I'm going to try to do that because um, it's actually touching the center wheel as it comes around. And where the balance arms are beside each other like this, one is up and one is down just a bit and it's touching that center wheel which is not allowing it to free spin, so I've got to stake that down a bit more and adjust it. See what happens. Fine tuning. So these are uh, truing calipers, and I just want to see before I try pounding on this some more, because I need to, it's too close to the center wheel, I want to be able to put this down just a bit, so I'm going to turn this and have a look at, and you, see, you put this between the truing calipers on the, on the pivot, and then you set this so it's almost touching the rim of the balance like this and then you spin the balance and have a look at the distance to see if there's any warps in here at all and it looks fairly flat yeah that looks pretty good right that's pretty flat that's true which means I didn't warp it pounding it down which means Worst case scenario is I got to take more material off the balance itself, which isn't good, but it might be what I have to do because I'm looking at the balance right now, and it is, you know, it's going to be tough because get, actually getting the balance off of this is going to be very hard. So I'm going to go about, I'm going to go about taking a little bit more material off that balance shame because it fits absolutely perfectly and there's no way of getting like a square inch maybe if I tap it a bit more and see if I can bring it down a bit I'm not sure if that's possible because it's just like a smidgen too uh, too tight so I'll try tapping it a bit more and then see what that happens there anyway I'm gonna have to end the video now because I, I need know I got to play with this but my problem is on this video here. It would be nice to, for you to see the watch working, but I could run this thing forever. Um, the problem is um, I need a little bit more real estate where that balance hits the balance staff on the inside there. And I need just a bit to move that balance down a bit because it's so close to that center wheel it's causing a problem. So, And there's no real way of raising the center wheel up a bit. I don't think there is anyway. So that means I've got to tap on the balance and hopefully put it put it down a bit so it can get on. And if I, if not if I if that can't be done, um, then I've got to remove the uh, the roller table. I've got to remove the the balance carefully from the balance staff, and I've got to take more material off the uh, balance staff on the inside. Just a ever so slight amount of material. It's crazy, crazy. I'm telling you. And then it'll run really well. So thanks for watching the video. I, I apologize not to be not finishing this, um, but I could run this. This could be another couple of hours of work. So, so 
Um, the pivots work, as I showed you with the old credit card routine I invented. It, the balance fit in there nice and perfect. Um, maybe I should run this watch with a credit card in the middle, right? Uh, and I just needed, I staked it on, I showed you how I staked it on there, and it's, it's just a 0 0.01 millimeters off. It has to go, balance has got to go down just a bit. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. If I get really brave, I'll show you the solution. Uh, right now I'm going to pause it and I might be ending it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you later. All right, plan D. So um, I'm going to take a little bit of material off the bottom part of the pivot because um, I think that I can thin it out just a bit to drop it down just a tiny bit to fit into the hole. So let's see how that Right, back at it. I'm going to take a little material off the um, bottom part of that pivot and um, just thin it out. I'm not going to make it any any uh, like like the length. I'm not going to change the length because I think that the length is fine. I think it's just uh, not dropping down far enough into the uh, pivot. So this is kind of tricky, but I'm going to do it anyway and see what happens. I'll be back. <laughs> Can't watch this. It's painful. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, I think we have success. So what I did was I took a little bit of material off the bottom of the uh, <clears throat> the bottom of the pivot. Just a smidgen, right? And now it's clearing the uh, center wheel, which is nice. And I don't have the hairspring on yet, but it's going to come on in a second. So um, which way is it pressing against here? So there, see? And it hits the pallet fork on the other side. That's why it's stuck in there. But as you can see, it's free now. So so I just have to put the hairspring on in place. And I should have success. Which is kind of cool. Look at that. And if that were hitting the center wheel, it would be stuck. So it's not. So I just... What I did was I went in there and I just... See, it's... it's uh, over banking on the center we on the um, as it goes around so I'm just trying it out here and I believe I have success so time to go eat dinner there we go that's the new balance staff and there's a lot of fine tuning required when you have it when you make a balance staff just to tell you because anything can go wrong here and uh, I'll get this little baby ticking later, but it's dinner time and I don't want to get in trouble. So that's the end of my video this time. It's a long one. Um, it's good. It's not going to have an issue. I'm going to I'm going to put the hairspring back on, put it all together. If I do have any issues at all, um, I can always uh, do what I did before. I actually put the the uh, I always put the balance in the in the lathe here, um, and I put it on the hairspring side just to remove a bit of material, and that was. To allow that pivot to drop into the jewel hole on the lower side, because I don't think it was quite all all the way into that jewel hole for some reason. So I just took a little material off the round there, and it allowed it to drop into the jewel hole, which allowed me to clear the uh, center wheel. So that was my issue, because I didn't think I'd, I'd cut the staff wrong. Anyway, thanks a lot. I'm going to make this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Adventures in watchmaking.